In this video, we're going to look at the new blur gallery. There's three different types of blurs in here that simulate different types of bokeh or lens of blur effects. The first one is a field blur, which simulates a depth of field. The second one is an iris blur, which puts a certain area in focus and everything else becomes soft and blurry around the edges. And then the third one, which I think is going to be real popular, simulates a tilt shift miniaturization effect where the tilt shift lens is actually at an angle and there's just a small thin field of focus. So let's jump on in right now and have a look at this. Check it out. Let's take a look at our new blurs here. What we're going to do is we're going to go under filter and then we're going to choose blur. And then under blur, you'll see three different types here added in the CS6 beta. We've got field blur, iris blur, and tilt shift. So let's choose the field blur first of all. And what this does is it simulates a depth of field. Notice right now we've got a point right in the middle, and then we've got this little pin. So when we click with the pin, what it does is it adds a second point. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to create an invisible gradient between the two of them and change the amount of blurring. So what we should do is grab the one of them, set the blur to zero, and then the other one we can set the blur wherever we want, just by clicking and dragging on, see that little white marker around there? That's how we set our blur. So now we could set, for example, let's put our blur right in the middle of our photograph, and notice as we pull out the sharp one, it creates a nice gradient in between it and this area is sharp, and everything else outside it is blurred. So we can move it around to show the different effect. And to be more realistic, why don't we set this down here, make our foreground here blurry, and let's make our background nice and sharp and in focus. Now what it's doing is it's simulating a nice depth of field effect that you would get on a lens. Now be careful that this is perfectly above it because if we go to the side, notice it starts to add it at more of an angle. So be careful for that one. So we'll just put that directly above it, and we can get that effect. All right, that's the field blur. Let's move on to the second one. Notice I was able to turn it off there. We're going to move on to the next one, which is the iris blur. Now, the iris blur, basically, we can just click and drag here to change the shape. Um, we can rotate it, and we can drag it out. Notice we can change the size of the area that's going to be in focus. So we can change the amount of blurring here, very minimal or we can increase it. And notice what it does is it adds the blur outside that area. So if we want, we can just add this little narrow focus of blur here. Let's bring that in small. Let's bring this one in smaller. And we can actually take these individual points too and we can pull those out so we can feather that or we can make it very sharp and very abrupt. And once again, we can change the shape of it. And you can see that. Now a little trick is if we grab the Option key, we can move these points individually. We can pull them in and out. So if you want to make one part really sharp and another part soft, you, you can go ahead and do that. So that's kind of the effect we've got there. We can also increase it here or decrease it there. Now one of the other things that we have here that's, that's kind of useful too is the Bokeh effect here. And this is the, uh, the blur effect. So we can change this. We can choose the light we can increase the amount of light so we get these little specular areas that are throwing off out of focus. We can control the light range here with these sliders here. And right now I'm going to put it there. And there's a nice effect here when we can actually add the color. So notice that we're actually adding color now to our highlights. And you might need to just play around a little bit here just to get them looking the way you want them. There we go. Maybe pull the, this back a little bit. And you can kind of see that. So see the, the light kind of color going in there. So it creates an interesting effect. So let's pull that back. And then let's look at the third one. This is the one a lot of people are going to get excited about. This is the tilt shift. We turn this on. This is going to simulate what you would get on a tilt shift camera, or a tilt shift lens, actually, that you would put on your camera. So the outside area is blurry. The inside is sharp, and then this is our transition area. So if we increase the blur here, and then we narrow down our band of focus, notice we can go from the top and the bottom, and we can pull it up, put it wherever we want, and let's increase this size there. What we're starting to get now is that little miniaturization effect you get 
when you use a tilt shift lens in that kind of a way and you can see how this looks miniaturized now this is a great time to play around for our, with our bokeh here so we're going to increase this i'm going to put the color all the way up and i'm going to push this up a little bit till we start to blow out some of these areas and let's pull it back and just play around with that about there and we get that kind of color in there and this creates this really really neat effect here and you can see and we can also make it symmetrical if we want so we don't have to uh, do the two sides individually notice that we can kind of get a little bit more symmetrical now and when it jumps around like that too if you just hold down the shift key it'll snap it so let's just turn that off there and uh, the, one of the other things that's interesting to note is that we can add different blurs. We could actually stack some of these blurs on top of each other. Uh, we can save the masks to channels, so we can use those channels for other things. And we could put it on high quality. It takes a little bit longer, but creates a good effect. And let's just click OK now. We're just going to apply this. And it'll take a second for it to kick in because it's quite a complex uh, operation here. And uh, almost there. This is definitely a lot quicker than it would have been in the past using the lens blur filter and creating uh, gradient masks and then adding those blurs into the masks. So there we go. There's our photograph and you can see it's got that really cool tilt shift miniaturized look. And uh, I'm sure people are going to have a lot of fun with this effect. And uh, probably <laughs> a few people are going to abuse it in some ways that are going to be uh, very creative and interesting to look at in the future.